Uh, great. Okay, moving swiftly on. Um, we have a video next. Unfortunately, our next speaker wasn't able to join us live. Um, but here we go. This is Lizette Hamming of the Dutch Flemish Association for Investigative Journalists. And this is Lost in Europe, deploying the Alvitali network on cross-border investigation. There, I'm, I've, I've been trying to um, set up my laptop uh, in a way that you can actually look at uh, a person, which would be me now, and look at the slides as well, but um, it didn't work. So um, I'm going to switch to the slides uh, in a second and um, guide you through it um, uh, at the background. I'm Lisa Tamming. I'm an investigative journalist from the Netherlands, relatively new in the field of journalism. I have a legal background and I've been asked to help lost in Europe with um, their freedom of information procedures. And we ended up filing requests in uh, 14 um, different European countries this year. There's two pending at the moment, so that would make a total of 16. And six of these um, have been filed already via the Elevitelli platforms, and one with um, via Vraagdenstaat, uh, which is a similar um, freedom of information platform, but running with different software. I will tell a bit about the aim of our project, then the freedom of information procedure and the uh, learnings that we uh, that we can share using the Elevatelli platforms. So the aim of the Lost in Europe project that started in 2016 is gathering the stories of 10,000 missing migrant children in Europe. And missing means um, in the sense that they are missing um, from public records. In the, last, in the past five years, uh, Lost in Europe has, has set up seven different files and different angles to the, to the projects and working together with 20 journalists across Europe. There's been uh, quite some uh, publications. There's been more and more research uh, and information about pushbacks at uh, external European borders. Pushbacks meaning migrant being pushed back at the European border. And uh, Geesje was uh, in the, the forests at um, different uh, border crossings in Europe where she found uh, torn pieces of paper, for example, at the French-Italian border. So we decided to, to look for pushbacks in Europe and um, concentrated on um, European countries that are part of the European, U European Union. Uh, and in specifically um, part of the Schengen uh, Agreement. Not only, but that's, um, those were one of the first questions we, we had to ask, ask ourselves. Um, and uh, Monica, uh, is one of the journalists involved in the project, dived into the existing research, um, mostly done by NGOs on the ground uh, and mostly done uh, at the borders you can see here um, on the map she made. So we were wondering where should we start? The documents that Geesje found and also most of the documents that we found in the NGO research um, online were more general uh, arrest documents. Only in France we, um, we found a, 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 a refus d'entrée, we thought at the beginning was the best way to uh, to start um, by asking for these refus d'entrées in France. And our first first version was um, asking for the actual documents, and then we changed that um, after also after um, talking about it with other people, uh, uh, various various of them uh, via the Alavetelli network. I'll come back to that later. That uh, we changed it to asking for the data sets, and then we decided in the end to ask for the total numbers and expecting to uh, that expecting that those numbers would be inside of data sets and not so much asking for the original documents, but uh, 
yeah, also because we were not interested in the documents themselves, but more in the figures. Um, so in the end, uh, this is our freedom information request. Geesje, of course, she knew that I was involved with uh, um, the Dutch Anapateli platform, and I told her that there are many others in Europe that we can use to file these um, re requests. And I told her that back then, not uh, a lot of the platforms um, had the public, had the um, pro version yet, so that we might have uh, to file in public. Uh, and she immediately said that that was not a problem for her at all. And I think that most of us expects, expect that for journalists in general, the uh, preferred option would be to file um, uh, hidden, that, that you don't need, that you cannot see that on the platform. We looked at um, all the Alabatelli platforms and in the end, decided to use um, as many of them as possible and discovered that some of them were down. The, there's no platform in Spain anymore, not in Italy at the moment, and the Norwegian one was down. We started on the 21st of February 2021, filing France, Germany, Italy and Slovenia, because those were the countries that we found documents in the NGO reports. For filing the requests, we needed some general freedom of information information that we uh, gathered uh, using the Alevitelli network. I will skip to the learnings um, so far, and please don't hesitate to contact me if you want to know more about um, our project, our freedom of information uh, procedures, uh, experiences, um, the Alevitelli platforms. Um, the differences between the um, freedom of information procedures in different countries. I'd be happy to tell you about this. Um, our learnings would be, um, for me, it's, it was really obvious that it was a really good thing. I was really happy that I've been to the Alavitelli conference uh, uh, in, in, I think it was two years ago, because there was a lot of the people that I got in contact with this past year were people that I met at the conference, which made it a lot easier um, to get in touch. Um, and also the Google platform sort of works. Maybe it can work better if we would be able to communicate in different ways and in a different way, but we, I, I did get um, a, a helpful reaction. Go public if you can, because I also noticed that uh, it is easier to collaborate on a public request than having to give permissions or uh, password sharing, pat passwords or anything like that. On the freedom of information procedure itself, it was really smart to check national freedom of information rules and regulations because they differ. I expected them to differ, but I didn't know in what way. So I was happy that we did, um, which also made me realize that I want to change the learning to let's set up a place where we can collect these national freedom of information rules and regulations and share it. Um, some more learnings are look for local and national context because it helps. Um, the fifth would be to double check whether the data is online or public already. Um, because we found out for in Hungary, Hungary, for example, it's most uh, it's the best example. There was quite some information online already. We didn't expect that. There's more uh, shared by the authorities than we could ever imagined. Um, using the Alvatelli platforms, I found out that an English translation would be very helpful, and the Swedish platform has it. And I was thinking also for the Dutch platform, why not? Because it's there. Um, I had, I knew the I know the platform by heart. So for me, also in languages that I don't speak, I, I was translating everything all the time. But um, it helped that I already knew uh, how the platform is structured and what I could find where. So um, that was a yeah. That's not for everybody, of course. Also, something that the Dutch platform does not have uh, is uh, using the space for information and explanation about the authorities that we can do in the platform. I realized if, you, if you're not so aware on how the authorities work on what, like I am in the Netherlands, and that's why I didn't uh, immediately think of using that uh, possibility. 
um, is very valuable. So um, let's use it. Um, eighth would be uh, that I, I noticed that paid staff uh, were quicker and more helpful in assisting. It's not uh, against the volunteers that helped because I know as a volunteer for the platform, every hour you spend helping other people is a valuable hour and difficult to to uh, to offer um, in a way. Um, but it I, it is for for me running the Dutch platform a valuable learning when combining it with um, request and freedom of information procedures not filed by the platforms. It can be quite um, overwhelming. And um, I'd be happy to share how we're managing that at the moment. Um, in general, um, please know where to find me. And I hope it was helpful.